All right, guys and girls, welcome to room 50 once again for another amazing practical. Uh, again, this is a required practical that we're doing and you need to know these because they could ask you about anything to do with this practical in your GCSE exam. So that's why we're doing this, just in case you've forgotten why I'm making these. Um, also, because I'm going to become a YouTube millionaire. Woohoo! Anyway, not really, but whatever. So here's the power pack. Now, guys, this experiment is to do with electrolysis. So electrolysis is using electricity to split uh, the bonds between uh, molecules or, uh, for example, sodium chloride. So we can use electricity to break the bonds that, in this case, ionic bonds holding sodium and chloride ions together. Now, with this experiment, the power pack is the key, right? Because it's going to form the understanding of um, how we how electrolysis works. So I've got some dye and stuff on my fingers from making slime, but don't worry about that. Um, so if you look here on the power pack, we've got a positive end and a negative end. And this is really important, as you'll see in a bit. So this wire is always going to be carrying a positive charge relative to this one. So this is the negative end of our power pack, this is the positive end of our power pack. I'm going to show you the whole setup and I'm going to explain why it's important uh, to know what wires are and where they are. So this one's in the positive, this one's in the negative. Alright, so I'm just going to show you an overall in terms of what equipment we need. Number one, we're going to need this power pack, of course, I've just spoken about that. You're going to need a 100ml beaker, uh, two carbon rods, which will be our electrodes, blue litmus paper, two wires, obviously, we've spoken about the wires already, and in this case, a solution of sodium chloride. You will be using other solutions as well, but we're going to focus on sodium chloride for now. Now, the problem with this practical, a really big problem, is unfortunately, at this school, we do not have... Um, electrode holders so now the, the point is is we do not want these two to touch once they're inside the beaker they're going to be connected by crocodile clips but we do not want them to be touching each other once they're in our beaker so I've placed my carbon electrodes in the beaker and straight away because we don't have electrode holders they are touching right and it doesn't matter how you fidget with them they're always going to be touching Right, so one way to do it is uh, one of you guys is going to have to hold the plastic ends of the wires. But I don't, I, that's just, I'm just not happy with that procedure, okay. So me and Mr. Gledhill, we were talking about how we could overcome this problem. And Mr. Gledhill was, was kind of like saying, well, why don't we improvise and make an electrode holder from paper. So we tried the paper, but the paper was too flimsy. And he said, well, why don't we do it from card? So I went about making it from card. Now there was a problem with the card uh, method as well however I found a way to fix it. So what's going to follow is I'm going to show you how to make an electrode holder from card so that there's absolutely no touching. So step one uh, what we're going to do is you're going to place the card over the beaker and just have a feel for where the beaker is. Uh, it's better to do it from the middle of the page because it'll have more structure and more stability there. So my first mark is going to be here and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pierce a hole here where I've made the mark. So just pierce a hole and then once we've pierced the hole we're going to fit this electrode through. I'm going to use a scissor to make that hole. So I've just moved the beak out of the way so I can pierce the hole. Uh, and just use a scissor and just like literally puncture a hole through it. So I've punctured the hole through it. Now all you have to do is you just force and you will need to force it through. Just, just try not to break it. So you want to do it from the bottom end. Right? Don't hold the rod from the top, hold it from the bottom so it's firm and stable. And just literally all you're going to do is you're going to push it through like that. So I've pushed it through. Now next what you're going to do is you're going to get your beaker back. Right, and you're going to place it right at the edge of the beaker. So this glass rod, or sorry, this carbon rod, will be touching the side walls of your beaker. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your second, you're going to take your second carbon rod, uh, which is here for me, um, and you're just going to make a straight 
So you're going to go from the straight position, you're going to have a look underneath uh, where your beaker is well, you can feel it really. And you want it to be straight across from this one. So once you find that edge, make sure it's straight across. There's the edge of my beaker on the inside wall. So I'm going to mark it with my carbon rod. And once again, you're going to make a hole using the scissors. Once you've made that hole, you're going to just force it through. Right. Obviously, you're going to cut this card down. You could have cut it down right at the beginning, which is how I did it when I was practicing. Um, and I think that would make more sense to make that cut and then do all of this bit. But cut it down to size and then see how it goes. So I've cut the card down to size. It's on top of the beaker. Um, my holes don't look too straight, but you know just be as straight as you can be now the key now if I put my rods in here right it'll be good However, once I connect the crocodile clips they will once again curve over and end up touching each other so the solution to this is to just uh, make a fold in here right and the idea behind this is that this will push in and jam the electrodes in place so that they do not touch so now that I've made that fold, right, open it up, place one carbon rod in there, the other one in here, and now just press down and keep the rods away from each other. It will take some fidgeting, which is fine, but once you get it in, it will be absolutely Brilliant. Right. And so let's put the crocodile clips on. So one goes, oopsie daisy, one goes on top here, one goes on top there. And what you'll notice is that straight away they cross over and they are touching. So you're just going to move them apart, press down and that will keep them apart and so I'll show you from the side how it looks the two rods do not touch each other now perhaps one of the problems that I've got now is probably my paper's gone too far down I've still got some gap so it won't be in the solution however it'd be better. it would have ideally been nicer had it not gone so far down but that doesn't really matter so the next bit involves quite simply taking some sodium chloride and adding a little bit to it. You don't need a lot guys, just add a little bit. So I've added in my sodium chloride and guys do note my power pack at this point is off. Right? It is not on at all. So just push that paper down, make sure the electrodes are nicely in place. I'm just going to adjust my clip uh, so that there's good contact. It doesn't matter where you, how you put it really, but as long as there's good contact. And once again, just ram your paper in. <laughs> and just ram it in as much as you need. The more ramming you do, the better it is. So if you look here, the electrodes are away from each other and happy days next what you're gonna have to do now guys remember the positive and negative bit you see this wire here is the positive wire coming all the way up and around and so this carbon rod will have a positive charge on it whereas this rod here will have a negative charge on it so you want to set the power pack to 4.5 volts you want to put your power pack on and make some observations so what do you observe We're going to have a look and you can see on the video, uh, you should be able to see some stuff. So this rod here, this first one on your left hand side, is connected to the positive side of the power pack. So that's going to have a positive charge. Whereas the one on your right hand side uh, has a negative charge because it's connected to the negative side of the power pack. So what's happening here is we're using electricity to break the bonds between sodium and chlor the sodium ions and the chloride ions. But the question is, what is moving to which direction? And I'm going to explain how you can figure that out now. So 
So what you're going to do is you're going to take a blue litmus paper and just wet it. Okay, so just wet the blue litmus paper so it becomes damp, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to place this at the negative, at the positive electrode. Why the positive electrode? Because the chloride ions are negative and so they're going to be attracted to the positive uh, terminal or the positive electrode. And so that's where we're expecting the chlorine to gather. So I'm just going to... Now, so I've managed to fit it in through a slot of the paper and straight away you can see that it is turning a reddish colour now hopefully it doesn't drop down into the sodium chloride solution uh, because hopefully it will be jammed up against the electrode. So it's kind of turned a reddish colour and you can see the bottom end of it is turning white, it's being bleached and this is a positive test for chlorine so in other words um, a blue litmus, a damp blue litmus paper will turn red and then bleach white. So we now know that the positive electrode, which is connected here, positive electrode has chlorine or chloride ions or chlorine even because it joins together to form chlorine um, at this electrode. And can you see it's bleaching white? Positive test for chlorine done. So the question is what is going on at the other electrode so what's going on at the negative electrode and that needs a bit of explanation and I'm going to explain all of it next. Here's the explanation of what's going on. So we've got sodium chloride uh, which is broken down so AQ that means it's aqueous so that means the sodium chloride is in solution and we're breaking the bonds between the sodium chloride uh, molecule by using electrolysis. So we're going to use electricity to break the NaCl into ions. So we're going to have a positive Na plus and a negative Cl minus. So if we look at our circuit, so that's we're looking at this in a picture form, uh, what we've got is we've got the positive part of our power pack linking to our carbon rod or our electrode. So this is going to be the positive, positive carbon rod and we've got the negative side of our power pack with our negative carbon rod or electrode. So the question is, well, what's going to go to the positive carbon rod? And we've already looked at that. We've said it's chlorine or the chloride ions because here the chloride ions right, have a negative charge, so they're going to be attracted to the positive um, electrode. So that's going to go there and we're going to have chlorine gas gathering up and collecting and because of this we're going to have uh, we can do our blue litmus tape <coughs> blue litmus paper test right next so the question is what's going to go to the negative side now you would think it's sodium wouldn't you because sodium is positive and therefore sodium should go to the negative electrode but it's not and I'll explain why that is right now now the reason why sodium does not gather uh, up onto the negative electrode is because of this reactivity series here. Can you see hydrogen is here? Anything that is more reactive than hydrogen, so that's all of this and see sodiums up there as well, uh, will not gather at the negative electrode. So if it's higher than uh, hydrogen, that means the hydrogen will gather at the negative electrode. So lead, tin, iron, zinc, aluminium, magnesium, calcium, sodium, potassium, all of these will not form on the negative electrode. Instead, it will be hydrogen. However, if it's less reactive than hydrogen, then that means that it will gather on the uh, negative electrode. So if you've got a solution of copper sulfate, right, the copper will go to the negative electrode. Right. Same with the silver. Let's say you've got silver nitrate. Because it's less reactive than hydrogen, it can go to the negative electrode. So you need to know about this bad boy here, the reactivity series. And that will help you to understand what's <laughs> gathering at the negative electrode. So the last bit you guys will do while well, during the experiment, what you guys will be doing is filling in this table. So you've got copper chloride um, and you're going to think about 
which part of the copper and which part of the copper chloride will be going to the positive electrode or the negative electrode. Now as it says in the table, the positive electrode is called the anode and the negative electrode is called the cathode. So which part is going to the cathode and which part is going to the anode? Use your reactivity series to figure that out as well for metals. Then you're going to do it for copper sulfate, sodium chloride, which you've just done together, and sodium sulfate. Okay, so do have a think. Um, try and figure it out yourself. The sulfates are a bit tricky, but we can go through that together.